This is uh, going to be all about leveling a lathe and then uh, I'm going to try a little bit of experiment. Um, I'm going to show you how to level a lathe with a real um, machinist level. Uh, mine is an import but it's very accurate and I'll show you um, how that works. And then what I'm going to do is because I got some questions about the accuracy of the test part that I made and um, you know if it's actually accurate enough. So um, this here, here is uh, Self Bend's How to Run a Lathe, which if you don't have this, I suggest you get it. It has a lot of information in there, a lot of tool grinding, um, and a lot of different test methods. It also has uh, some, a little bit of uh, speeds and, and uh, things for uh, different materials and also um, the actual speeds that can be attained by the different Self Bend lathes. And, it's, it's just it's a very very good book and for anybody that's starting out on a lathe or even has been running for a while it's a very good resource um, this is a reprint uh, by Lindsay publications I got this one just because I wanted to have a physical copy you can get one if you do a search in Google um, you'll pop up with a PDF uh, version of this it's an older version but they're pretty much all, almost all the same this happens to be in 1942 um, edition but they really haven't changed that much so what I'm gonna use to level the lathe is an import machinist level now this is a little bit different than your regular carpenters level um, it's much 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 more accurate it's precision ground on the bottom here and it has a, a V way I'll, I'll move it and show you that in a second but I just wanted to show you it's accurate here to two ten thousandths of an inch in 10 inches um, so that's the accuracy of this one um, I, I did get the import one just because for the amount of times I'm gonna use it I really don't feel like spending two hundred dollars on a level um, granted the American ones are probably much much better built and more rugged but this just does just fine for what I need it to do as you can see um, I got a couple of paper shims under this box and um, let me zoom in on this here and you can see that we're pretty level there. Now all I'm going to do just to demonstrate a little bit of the accuracy of this and why you wouldn't want to use this to level your cabinets. And it's just a regular old piece of computer paper. I'm going to slip it onto one side here and you'll see the difference that that makes. Now see how far that level has traveled over. This bubble is actually buried to that side now. and. Um, these sheets of paper are only a couple of thousands inches thick even if that. Let me prove it. And you can see that that goes right back to level. So here's the paper. See, yeah, it's about just shy of four thousandths of an inch, and how far that that moved. All right, um, let me get the camera in a different angle, and I'll kind of show you how I'm going to go about this. All right, we're well, just a little bit easy to handhold this for the time being here. Uh, what I'm going to do, or want to do with that level, is basically pick three or four different points across the entire bed to be able to level this out. Um, so I'm going to do right here at the headstock. Now there are a little, few little divots there, um, just from chuck marks in the past. So you're going to, I'm going to, well, I'm going to have to be aware of that and make it as parallel as possible. And I'm going to want to sit in directly in the middle of the bed and over by the, the end. And I might pick another, another spot in the middle. Now this bed, a uh, four and a half foot bed, I do know from doing this in the past when I first put this lathe on this bench, that this carriage moving left and right on this bed, depending on where this is, will actually flex it somewhat. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is most of my work is going to be pretty much within these points here. So I'm going to leave that carriage um, right there because that's where I'm going to have most of my travel and level the bed from there. Now the way I have this on here, this is, fortunately my camera focal length kind of sucks, but... Um, that's my bench that I built um, 
four by four posts. These are four by four square posts. Um, uh, there's actually four pieces: one on the back, one one on the front here, and then two this way, strung together with two by four, two by four, and then layered in between two. So it's very very sturdy. This is a um, a solid core door blank on the top. So unlike a metal bench, I I can shim it to a point, but it's a lot easier. I mean, I'll shim it to get it completely level, and then I can actually tweak these bolts tighter, and that'll twist the bed. Um, I do have a metal plate as a, just a force spreader on that shelf. Now, it, when I say level, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything has to be... You, your level is a reference. In other words, it, you just want your bedways parallel with each other with no twist but level is the only, is the best reference to do that um if they were all if this entire bed was tilted towards me an inch down on either side as long as that inch carried over to e to each side that's perfectly fine you want you want to take out twist not necessarily level if that makes any sense and now my cellar floor is a little bit uneven as all cellar floors are so to get this um relatively level somewhat I was able to take out um, the big gaps and everything with this shim assortment um, you can see I have basically a range of smallest is a 64th of an inch up to an eighth of an inch and they're basically just half hole clips and I was able just to shove them underneath the mounting bolt uh, between my metal plate and the foot now because this is a wood bed to get the final tweaking down I'm basically able just to tighten down one of these nuts and it'll smush the wood enough to be able to tweak it that thousandth of an inch or so. Um, so let me see if I can get the a little bit of a better angle on the the uh, level here. We'll start at this end and work our way down. Right, here you can see we're uh, off a little bit here. Now this could be due to many factors just um, if vibration those bolts loosening up or also since this is wood humidity and temperatures do affect it uh, I do have a dehumidifier down here running 24 7 um, so it's relatively controlled humidity it's not great but you can you can see that this side is is higher than this side so to get this down I'm gonna tweak that mounting bolt down a little bit here very slowly and you'll start to see that bubble move There we go. The shaft was just spinning on it. Now you just gotta go a little at a time and watch where it levels out. And then go, you know, up as far as you need to go. There you go, that's pretty good there. Uh, I'm going to pick a bunch of spots along the bed there and keep doing that until we get level. Um, I'm assuming you don't need to see that more than once, uh, or want to see that more than once. So let me get to that and show you some of the results. Right now let me show you what I mean just by this carriage is going to drag that down a little bit. I'm about, uh, we'll give that about four inches away from the carriage and we're pretty much dead nuts on level. Now, let me move this right next to the carriage and you'll see a little bit of deviation. It's not gonna be by much, but it's still gonna drag it back a little bit. You see right there. Also, same thing on the other side here. If I put this right under the tailstock here. We're dead nuts on there. Now if I go close to the carriage, I'm not going to be able to go any closer than that just because my 
threading dials in the way we're off by the same mount on the other side so I'm gonna go ahead and call that lathe pretty damn level now I, it's not something that you have to do every time you use the lathe I would probably do this maybe once every every season every every change of weather especially if you have a wood bench because the temperature and humidity is gonna affect it the metal bench not so much but even that's gonna change uh, just from vibration and moving around and everything else but um, unlike this one you're gonna have to actually add the shims every time you need to move it um, so you need a good assortment of shim stock also some of the uh, I believe the 10 K's and the 10 inch lathes will have a leveling foot which um, right about here uh, there, there will be a, an allen head which will has a cam on it and it's going to allow you to level it just by turning it um, well, obviously this one does not I did have to change the shims out a little bit um, I did change this this one to a bigger shim but as you can tell the floor itself and the bench itself is definitely not level so let me go grab a regular carpenter's level and we'll see how level that is just to show you the difference, this is just on my um, my table itself. This is a, a pretty decent um, newer 48-inch uh, level that I have, and you you can see it's 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 pretty level. I mean, it, it's not not that off according to the carpenter's level. Now, this thing is buried, so you just see the sensitivity difference there. And also, just if you were to pop this across the lathe bed as compared to that you can see that's off just a little bit and this one here is dead nuts that's why you don't use a cop in this level now like I said, I'm going to do the um, two-collar test found in the How to Run a Lathe book. And um, my plan for that is I'm going, to, I'm going to do another video, but it's going to be related to this and also related to my other one. I, I Basically, I want to test to see the difference in the test bar that I made as compared to this one. And I'll show the differences on that video if I can get to that.